this angle, number one, not feeling it. I already know I'm looking at my viewfinder. I already know I'm, I'm probably going to have to convince myself to post this. So this is not the most appealing angle of me. I will agree. I feel like it's not. But listen, content is content and we got to put the content out. And I feel like I'm like, let me just hold this thing. Let me, let me just hold my, my, my mic. Okay. Today, today we got a new episode. Okay. Today is episode eight. This is episode eight. And um, if you watched the last episode, okay, I told you I was starting a new job. So I needed a new setup. This, as you can see, it's not set up yet. Although it's so cute. You got the cute plants in the back ain't set up yet okay i try to get cute for y'all with my little brown brown shades okay didn't even put my nails on for today got a cute little brown makeup on i am just trying to bring all this content okay because again it's not about perfection but today's drink is a you know a little a little hot chocolate or whatever so i'm filming this before i start work actually today i had a half a day kind of because i had to get new retainers because you see your girl got the she she got the braces off period guys i'm really dying because i'm looking at my viewfinder and it looks like i'm like like this is their video and i'm just like like a special guest zanji does he's run by the plants today and i'm the special guest if you like this angle tell me in the comments below i really do not like it because literally i'm leaning over like this but i don't want to complain the whole episode i don't want what this episode is to be about and i think i gotta turn this around like <laughs> let me have some sense is it like this i'm not even supposed to be holding this to begin with but i'm gonna put a clip in on the screen of my new case for my laptop i decided because this mic has to be connected to my laptop when i film why not why not just connect to the freaking laptop open your reddit here and get over with your life you know what i'm saying so this is your first time here this is zanji does see it's a series on my channel where i i like i get so like like tongue-tied in this part because i'm like it is supposed to be one thing, but for right now, it's something else. But eventually, it's going to be this. So, yes, let me put the window down because I, I know the car is passing. It's going to piss me off. Hold on. Windows are down. So, like I was saying, so it is supposed to be something else, but it is what this is for right now. So, basically, Zinji Dusty is a series on my channel where you email me a story on your mind or something you need help with, whatever. A lot of YouTubers have been doing this a lot lately. The original OGs that I've been watching that do this have been Nikki Glamour and Voodoo Child. So, all that to say, I'm inspired by them, not all the new girlies, but no shade to the new girlies. But anyway, you're supposed to be emailing me submissions and I only have gotten one. Okay, we're in episode eight. I think we're doing really good for 200 subscribers, one submission, eight episodes in. That's actually like more than I was expecting. So because we don't get submissions all the time, that's fine. Emails on here down below. I'm still what has been my other, my other option or the other decision is that, you know, people on Reddit and core digest sometimes they go there for advice and why not just you know grab stories from there give you my advice and show y'all what i have to offer in the meantime and then kind of be like okay maybe i'll submit a story to her i right? kind of like how she gives advice so um when i read these reddit stories i don't say the username i don't say anything like that because obviously they're not signing up to be on youtube so i totally respect that and if anyone on there was supposed to find my video and they go delete that shit i will like it's fine and so all that to say guys uh I am on Reddit. If you want to chat with me on there, I really won't talk that much. But with my subscribers or people that subscribe to me, I go on there to collect stories, see what's going on, and then give people advice there too. But all in all, I'm not really a big Reddit girl, okay? I'm just there reading, providing y'all advice. And also, I feel like there's a lot of stories on Reddit that people relate to and be like, yo, that's literally my situation right now. And it's like, why not just do it this way? You know what I'm saying? So usually, how the series works is i give a little briefing a little briefing this is really casual like this is supposed to feel like you're in my room with me living with me chilling and we're catching up and i'm giving you advice and you're chilling with your home girl it's like a real casual vibe i have i always have a drink i usually have my nails done but today i was like you know what? it's not about perfection and i am on a time crunch i am time today usually when i film these i'm just chilling lolly gagging lolly gagging and just whatever today i'm on a time crunch so i am going to get right into it but yeah i did start the new job and if you see the spacing between my videos um basically i started the new job and couldn't film and i was adjusting to that job adjusting to learning about it and i all i will say is um so i don't know if they watch social media because it is a remote job so I have to be very careful with my words but let's just say mm, you know what i mean mm, yeah 
Let that be self-explanatory for you. Call center job. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So with all that being said, run my shit up. Run my social media up. Get me out of it. Get me out of it. Okay, like, show me love. Like, when I say show me love for real, I mean that, like, but... <laughs> Yeah, so it's been honestly such a pain. (sighs) I'm trying to, every day, I just have to weigh my pros and cons. That's the kind of vibe it is. So uh, I have to go there later, and I don't want to dwell on it so much before. And just really enjoy filming this episode, you know what I'm saying? Episode 8, you know what I'm saying? We got to get to 10. Like, we got to keep going on a roll. I have a content schedule now, you know. I don't know if you guys know. I've been trying to be serious about it. And uh, I mean, I was always serious about it, but that's the thing I have is I think I can fit everything in my head when I can't so this was one of those things I could not fit in my head so I literally had to sit down make a schedule and my plan is and hope is to always post a Zanjita's tea I think every Wednesday I don't know if it's morning or night but you know you'll start to see a pattern and once there's a pattern just know to expect me that day and like I said start submitting so we can get off of reddit because eventually I'm gonna get off of reddit and have enough submissions hopefully one day to just read them and that's it but yeah I'm really excited for this um forewarning my camera this is deciding to do something weird lately I don't know what I haven't changed anything no one else has touched my camera and I just wanted to let you know ahead of time if we lose video for this oh well we got the audio okay and thank god i figured out the audio okay because for many episodes i was struggling but let's get into this okay so mm, i have a bunch saved you know i haven't filmed in a while so i've just been saving some but i don't know i don't know let's just read some okay i don't know how many i'll read today because of the timing but yeah like i said you can follow me on reddit you can follow me on my other socials on the screen here i have been trying to tell you guys now like if you're someone that's new here who's never seen me before and you're someone that's like me like i gotta watch the whole video through to see if i'm really feeling this person if i really want to subscribe because to subscribe to someone it gotta be worth it i really agree that with that if you feel that way don't even feel shallow about it it gotta be worth it you know youtubers like subscribe like two seconds into the video like let me see if i'm feeling you first so see if you're feeling me see if you like my vibe at least give the whole episode a shot like just give it a whole shot see if you like it see if you like how i talk see if you like the advice i offer and then do the little subscription and if not just be generous enough to give me a like because if you give me a like that pushes my video to people who are probably looking for what's it called for content just like this so that's all i ask that's all the housekeeping rules i ask and of course be nice in the comments and if you have any suggestions or advice for the people that I'm reading about. Comment that down below. If you have a similar experience, comment that down below. If you're like, girl, I'm about to email her because she's spitting facts right now. Email me, email below. And I am on other socials. You can follow me there. And I also don't do this for like all of my content. I do hair and life content. All right, so this is actually the polyamory group. I'm not polyamorous. Um, Yeah, completely monogamous, like extremely. So I am open-minded right so let's just see what's going on in these people's world okay if you're in a polyamory relationship you're into that stuff i applaud you like you're built different you're built different like like we're like not even like a like in a negative way but like you're cool like i can never i'm just my heart isn't built that way i let's read the story so the title of this one is my girlfriend just got proposed to i'm happy but conflicted okay Ooh. i've known my girlfriend for around eight years and we've been dating for around 2.5 this year, she started dating her roommate she'd only known for a few months, less than a year after meeting him there and get. Now I'm gonna pump the brakes right there because I know I'm gonna come off with mad ignorance. Like I really have never been in this situation. Don't have friends that are polyamorous, so please educate me if I'm really wrong. I thought how polyamory means y'all all three gonna date. Y'all all three have to agree, y'all all three have to fuck with each other, like each other's vibe. Like I thought that's what I thought. What's going on here? Okay, so it seems like homegirl got her own. She got two. She got a homeboy here and a homeboy here, and they don't even, you know. They say I'm very conflicted. I'm very happy for the both of them, and I think they deserve the world. I also know that our paths differ. They're moving out of the country. That's not right. No, because if I was a poly in a poly relationship, I'd be like, why am I not a part of that? And that could be my monogamy jumping out. You know what I'm saying? 
but moving out the country like i would be really upset at like for me i'm i'm seeing this with like a teamwork lens like why can't you just include me like you know what i'm saying like you're you are my partner at the end of the day you can do whatever you want with that person because that seems like that's the vibe but you're not gonna do a whole life change like that like you are dating two people you need to consider both you're not just gonna roll you're not gonna do one with one person and roll with the punches with the other like that just doesn't sound right to me but i can't help but feel like she's chosen him over me because i'm a bad partner why do you think you're a bad partner we originally entered a poly relationship because i couldn't meet romantic sex slash sexual needs because i'm asexual and touch Adverse. Okay, if people don't know what that means, I am not gonna lie and say I know what asexual really is, but I think I know what touch adverse is more than asexual. So if I'm wrong, please correct me again. But I think asexual is, I'll put it on the screen actually so that if I have to be corrected, but asexual is when you, you're not sexually attracted or physically attracted to any gender, I think it is. And touch adverse, I think it, it's just you don't like to touch. I feel like I'm so wrong. I'm so sorry. I'm not giving y'all a good look. You're like, I need to submit advice to her because she don't even know what the hell she's talking about. This is a complex one. Okay, I kind of challenge myself here. But they say, I feel like despite her telling me it's okay and being supportive, which is great. It's the main reason she chose him. Because of that, I feel like I failed as a partner and that there's something wrong with me. Oh my gosh. Like, I feel so bad for this person. <laughs> mm. Okay, so... I don't know if you guys are like me. I'm a very curious creature at heart. So although I don't mingle in a lot of things, I know a lot of weird things because I just like to know what other people do with their lives. So I do look at a lot of polyamory videos and be like trying to understand how people get to where they get. All the videos I've seen of polyamorous couples, um, they, they say like, they say that you have to like all agree that's what i found that you all have to agree it's not gonna work out that way it has to be like an equal balance between all three and i'm wondering if this person even wanted to do polyamory like i feel like they just agreed for their partner but that's not who they are at their core and i've heard that a lot of couples fail that way when they're doing polyamory because someone is just doing it to make the other person happy you know what i'm saying and I don't know how dating an asexual person is. If you have any experience or you are an asexual person, how do you guys get your needs met? You know what I'm saying? Um, in relationships, maybe does he need to date an asexual person as well? Do asexual people date each other? Like, you know, and with the touch aversion, like I'm even saying that word right. I think this person isn't the one for you. And I think that it feels like to me, that you guys should just break up because y'all aren't meant for each other and i think y'all are just trying to be nice and not break each other's hearts which is not good so um i don't know and we're not getting much relationship context anyway so yeah if you're asexual or you have the touch aversion or touch averse don't feel like you're a problem like that's just who you are at your core maybe you've been through things to get you to that place maybe you haven't that's just who you are never feel bad and feel like there's something wrong with you like you know there's people in relationships who don't like to kiss and others that do and don't feel like you're weird because you like to kiss your partner and your partner doesn't like just because that's just who they are and not because they don't want to touch your lip like you know I me mean? i want to talk to her about this but i don't want to make her upset this is the first time in her life she's so genuinely happy i don't know what to do does anyone have any advice or any thing to say in general any kind of insight is highly appreciated well i've been saying my insight so let me read some of the comments on here it's okay someone said it's okay to feel a loss but please don't internalize this as you being less than this is ob this obviously creates a solid hierarchy yeah but do you remember why you chose this relationship? Do you have talks together and expectations during and after the wedding together? Someone said you need to acknowledge your own feelings with your partner or whatever you're into. Like they have to just know. And that is the truth at the end of the day. They have to know where your mind is at. If you don't tell your partners, friends, families where your mind is at, no. Sometimes people just really cannot tell that something's going on. It's crazy. Um, I'm a people watcher, so I can tell when something's off. But other people just can't. Like other people just aren't built like that so what would you say to this person or if you've been to something similar comment down below if you feel like you relate or you have something similar you want to submit to the email go ahead i got you let's read another okay let's read about this let's read about this today's episode is giving very relationship talk when I, mean, I feel like i've been in this person's shoes before and uh, 
Yeah. So the title of this is, I feel like if you get catfish on your first date, do not continue and leave. Mm, comment down below what you think about that. Here's my thing. Guys are so quick to say, she was a catfish. But was she though? Or did you just assume that the face tune was really that crazy? Like... <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's the thing when I when I think about catfishing. So I think there's obvious forms of catfishing, right? Where people it's like, okay, like what the fuck is that? Like, you know, face app when they like add the lashes, you got you make your body look like a figure eight, like not your person it. When you blur a little blemish in there, is that really catfishing? You know I'm wearing makeup. Like men need to get better at seeing makeup, you know? Let me just read it. Let me just read it before I say my opinion. Oh, I'm laughing like I be catfishing. All right, so it says, I went on a date where this chick did not look like what she posted on Tinder. Oh, here's the thing. I already went off to a bad start. I hate to admit this. Okay, I'm like, I was, I was getting the Mars on Tinder. No, I'm just kidding. I was on Tinder for like, I'm cringing because I literally hate the app so much. I was on Tinder for like a month. Okay, and like I said, back to the thing about I'm a curious researcher curious creature all i saw was that woman no not woman because i was not on the bisexual <laughs> let me get my thoughts together all i found was that people use their best photos for tinder okay their most sexual photos for tinder and if you watch the circle on netflix netflix or whatever it's on if you saw you saw how they dissected themselves when they were making their profiles and they were like oh yeah maybe i should put a little on a photo with like my tits out or or maybe a photo with you know like the abs out because you know that's what tinder is the breeding ground for okay for me i was like i'm just putting fucking selfies because i'm really here trying to get a boyfriend but right and then i later learned that's not what that app is for not because i did anything but i was just like oh this is all y'all want to talk about i'm out goodbye i'm deleting but yeah no don't set yourself up She's put her best photos on there, okay? If she did a little face app, made her butt pop out a little bit. She's trying to get, she's trying to get some dick. She's going to make her, her butt look a little fatter. I mean, why not? Why not? She still looked okay, so I just ignored it. Then she decides to keep getting me drinks at the restaurant. He just jumped, like, from A to B. Hasn't even given us context. Okay. She decides to keep getting me drinks at the restaurant. I was unable to drive, so she became the designated driver and went into a liquor store and got a bottle of rum, gave it to me, and of course, I was blind to it. I don't like his energy. I don't. You're a grown-ass person. You can't stop yourself from drinking. She's just not forcing you. Now she's forcing you to drink and put it in your face saying, you don't drink this right now, I will literally stab you. Like, I don't like that vibe you're coming off on, but okay. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, this kind of crosses a very thin line because there are people who, there are people who can get drunk and you can't tell. And there are people that are drunk and can't tell. If you're meeting this person for the first time and you're someone who gets drunk and they can't tell, maybe they're like, okay, let's keep the party going. I don't know. Like, you haven't specified that. So this is kind of hard for me to give advice on, but I'm going to keep reading. At some point, I was passed out and she used my finger to cash that person money. All right. Now I'm mad. Now I'm worried. Now I don't like this girl. Because what the hell is that? Seriously, like, what do you... Yeah, that's when you cross it in a line. Like, seriously. She tried using my credit cards. Funny thing is I changed my address and city, so it's difficult she put in. Always declined them. Anyway, serves me right. Currently in bed right now with a bad hangover, and I just feel awful. Just looked at the feed. Thank you for all the support. Okay, that was I'm saying. Giving an update. Someone said, that's beyond catfishing. She's a predator, a con artist, a thief. Here's the thing. Here's where my mind is having a brain fart because the title of this is if you feel like you get catfish on your first day, do not continue to leave. He says I linked up with her. She looked okay. So I moved on with my life. So because she's a catfish, she's a, she's a, she also robs people. No, those, those are two separate things. If she edited her photos to look a certain way, that's another thing. But if she takes advantage of drunk people, that's something else. Just because you're a catfish doesn't mean you take advantage of people that are drunk. That's who she was. She is like a horrible person, really like it's so uncomfortable it's let me read these comments people are going on about like women being able to get away with things versus men blah 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 people trying to give them tips on how to avoid that that from happening again okay here's the thing i don't know what the fuck 
the photos or whatever that and what she did to you is completely separate okay if you've ever been on a date where you're taken advantage of not in the sexual way or whatever but they try to take your money try to use your car took advantage of you being drunk and try to make you say things or whatever number one i apologize for that situation and if you feel comfortable emailing me about it you want me to read it on the channel or just want me to email you a part that's fine or if you're open to talking about it in the comments that's okay that's not okay like really i feel bad for this person because it's like and i feel so sad because i feel like i came off in the beginning like oh not you about to say that whatever whatever but it was the hardest story to navigate because the title had a, i had an expectation with the title right and i wondering if y'all did too but her being a catfish whatever her insecurities whatever that's her business now if she had a whole like someone else's photos and came with someone else of course that's like what the fuck in itself but she came to the date looked a little different okay it happens right people catfish all the time either a little bit or like a big ass amount of catfish what she proceeded to do after i would i really wish this person gave more detail about like how they get when they're drunk and things like that because you know what i'm saying so they're they passed out after that point where she they passed out and this person was starting to use their cards like that was so not right like i can completely agree with you that was so not right and the reason i'm like because mm, you know when people are like drinking like was she drinking with you like when people are drunk together they do stupid things together so a part of me is just wondering what happened at the liquor store like you know what happened before you passed out where did were you saying anything like because i feel like drunk people will get are honest and they're like like what the fuck are you doing blah 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 like and maybe they were scared like i don't you know i'm not giving um what's it called excuses for that lady because what she did was fucked up yeah this is what someone commented this is not a catfish issue but a criminal one you are scammed and the fact that she was a catfish is irrelevant irrelevant okay somebody um responded to that person said it is relevant because it shows how dishonest she was from the jump someone who lies like that is very unworthy two extremes so i'm gonna have to disagree on that comment down below what you think about that one but i think one thing doesn't have to do with the other no if i have a lump on my cheek that day and i think everything about the photo looks cute i will want to smooth out that lump like i'm so sorry about it if that makes me catfish and that makes me catfish but you know what i'm saying like people have photos and they are allowed to have fun with their photos do you think every photo you see online is a raw image no it's not and just because i edit a pimple out of my photo does not mean that i steal people's money for fun <laughs> no i am sorry this person had a situation if you were ever on a date and it went left like this let me know in the comments down below let me know what you would have done if you were this person like let me know what you think about that one that one was a little um, tricky that one took a took a turn on me there yeah okay let's do the last one because i do have to get ready for work and this subreddit is called highly sensitive and let me just say that's me it's me it's a place for me that's a safe space for me my god am i sensitive like comment down below if you're sensitive too okay i hear you here's the title of this one it says i'm unsure if i'm actually being treated slash spoken to poorly or if i'm just highly sensitive i have a problem with assuming people are upset with me don't you trigger me like that girl don't don't trigger me like that that's me every day oh my god abby okay my boyfriend is like my pillow my journal sometimes and i'm like she has a problem with me i know it i know it and he's like because he doesn't care like he does not use people's faces to determine if they're upset or whatever he's like if i don't have a problem with you there's no problem if you haven't said there's a problem there's no problem for me i'm like why are you looking like that when you talk to me why do you talk to me like that is there a problem speak up i be reading the room one thing about me is i'm gonna read the room even if i don't have to i'm always read the room so that first sentence completely triggered i'm triggered i'm working on it with my therapist by the way don't worry about me i'm here to help you <laughs> it's also common that i assume people are upset with me something i'm sure many people relate to this being said i found myself in a situation where i'm with a person who i love but this person often says things to me that makes me feel small hmm. this is a kind of person who i trust so is it just me being a highly sensitive person who is perceiving his small harmful comments as belittling belittling or is this person shrinking me? Are you gonna give us an example? <laughs> yeah, 
I'm getting tired. I'm worried that it is impossible to know the answer from only this post. So in the place of that, does anyone who may struggle with... You know what? I really hate wasting my time. I really hate wasting my time because... I can't help you. If you don't give me examples of what's being said, I can't help you. Here's the thing. Context matters. When you, people say you're a sensitive person, I think context matters. What is What are people saying to you that makes you feel hurt or triggered by what they're saying? If this person says, girl, your socks be stinking all day. Like, can you just wash your fucking feet? And you're like, oh my God, like, you make me feel small. Like, I can't, like, you must hate me. That's different, okay? versus no one will ever love you you you're ugly like shut the hell up there's a spectrum in that yeah someone that says so the examples dot 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 i'm sorry i wasted y'all time i'm gonna leave this in the video because what the fuck okay let's just do this last freaking one yeah this is a long one and this will be the last one but it is a serious topic so trigger warning yeah the title is i just left my abusive abusive ex 24 hours ago who has threatened to kill me multiple times no one deserves that let me just say that first and foremost so yeah i think it finally clicked in my brain that the threats to me or something i had become able to ignore easily because of how numb i've been due to the severity of the mental and emotional and physical abuse in just only nine months i have become so numb that i could easily just block out the terror i have felt during abusive nights altercations and telling myself he won't actually kill me mm. even though he threatens to kill me he'd say he won't actually do it even though he gets detailed plus the fact that he strangled me here's some things recently that happened that he did that made me worried so i'm kind of gonna skimp this because it's very detailed and like even though i haven't been in an abusive relationship or a domestic abuse relationship i've known people around me and it is triggering for me because I am highly sensitive and two, no one deserves that and it really makes me emotional. You know, I'm about to go to work, so I'm trying not to get sad, but I wish domestic abuse wasn't a thing and I've been around it and I've been, not around it, sorry. I've been around friends who, friends, peers, etc., who deal with it and it is the most heartbreaking thing as a bystander, but I know it doesn't amount to what the actual victim is going through. And it's such a hopeless feeling because you want to be there for loved ones and they can't see the pain that it causes or, you know, how bad it is. And it is sad. I'm going to put on the screen some resources if you're going through this. And, you know, trust me, I have a place in my heart for people that go through this. And it's obviously I don't wish this on anyone. And if you're going through this, um, I hope my channel can at least feel like a safe space to you or that you i feel like i'm gonna get emotional start crying but it's just so fucked up like sorry yeah i really wish people didn't have to go through this i didn't think i would get like triggered like this but um just know i'm here like if you need a place a space that you can just go to to forget about it about how hard things are for you um i've been emotionally abused so i know i had to do a lot of escaping yeah Trust me when I say I know, but obviously being hurt by someone you love is something completely, like physically touched. Um, inflicting pain on someone is absolutely horrible. So let's continue to read, um, again, trigger warning. And I think it's important to bring up and highlight these kind of things because it is a very big issue that still goes on. And um, I don't really know the age group that watches my videos, but I do know that if there are little girls or girls like my sister's age, um, girls who are my age um all that in between even older know that this is a safe space for you i welcome you with open arms and it's okay like you have a space here um but yeah i think it's important to bring awareness to this because this is a real thing this is not some kiki or funny topic it's very serious so let's see if i have any advice and um Let's see this story here. So this person um, said they were starting to get worried because their boyfriend was doing these certain things lately. So he was, uh, I guess, disgusted by the Gabby Petito case, which, oh, rest in peace to her soul. Fuck that guy. I don't give a fuck what y'all think about it or whatever. Um, 
the boyfriend was annoyed, I guess, by the media coverage. And um, this girl's close to Gabby's age. And I felt so connected with her. I know the look of exhaustion of please help me. Well, and I guess this boyfriend said, oh, she probably deserved it. And I guess he told her he was eventually going to Gabby Petito harass. Like, and I'm getting pissed off because it's like, if you said that to me, and this is no way to make you, if you are going through this, being like, it's easier to say something. And I completely, like, I completely get it. I know, and I get it. You can say whatever, but when you're in that situation, it's easier said than done. If you're in a situation like this, right, and your partner says something like that, I know it's fucking hard. You just try to leave just try to leave when they can't notice and can't tell trust me that's the safest way don't make an announcement about it don't give them time to plot anything they don't own that they don't deserve that right that doesn't fucking matter and i know you're probably if you're like why why don't i just say it so that i can feel my victory it's not worth it it's not worth it. you're gonna get in more issues doing it that way just leave take your shit and go if you have kids and my heart yearns for you if you're going through this with kids i know people who went through that with the kids just take your shit and go call a family call a loved one you're not alone and you can get help for what what you're going through i'm trying to be very um respectable i don't want people to feel like i'm calling them out or anything but you know i know what it could do to a person you love what being in a situation like that could be and don't give someone multiple chances or examples of proof or proof that they're gonna do something to you like just fucking go like it's not okay it's never gonna end pretty it's never gonna end pretty so just leave like i know victims or survivors like you can't just help you to leave it's not that easy and i know i know trust me you have to make a plan you have to make a plan you have to live a double life and secretly plan to go you know and don't give people a second chance people like that don't change they need to want to change people that are the abusers they have to want to change you cannot make them change you cannot force them just like someone who is a victim you cannot um force them to leave you cannot force them to see this person how they really are it is a very bad cycle and again i want you to know this is a safe space for you and um i get it i get it i know i've never been no one's put their hands on me in the situation but i've seen it i get it i get it i do get it okay so this young lady you know built the courage to tell this person um i no longer wanted to be in a relationship i told him in the morning i no longer want to be in a relationship when he finally allowed me to get in the car to leave yesterday morning i drove straight home with my dog i still have my own apartment thank god thank god yesterday afternoon i got a notification from my bank showing he had charged my debit card hundreds of dollars on playstation after i left well i texted him pissed off of course eventually it got ugly he threatened to expose my private info um try to humiliate me i'm not gonna read this i'm, I'm really not like this is gonna be extremely triggering for someone he basically texted her like i'll be so happy when i get to end your life and hear whatever your last words basically like and that it's going to be justified when I go to court. No. Something clicked for me last night. I realized that this person not only talked about me multiple times, but that he would enjoy. And the person is now is also on a drug that might let him do it. It's so time to go. It is so time to save yourself. And sometimes that's what you have to do is realize like, yes, it is um, life or death. Some people think it's a joke. It is life or death. And I understand it's such a traumatic thing to be in that it's very hard and reality can be distorted. Um, I think I have another advice is if you're in this and you're still not sure that what you're in is bad, journal about how it feels. Journal about what's going on. And when eventually you do leave this person and... You're in a better place and you know um read what you wrote and tell yourself was that okay and you'll see like wow like that was just so horrible like i did not deserve that like god like i hate domestic abuse situation like i really do like it sickens me and i didn't know this episode was gonna take such a turn um but i am here for you like i'm not even kidding i'm so here for you trust me but let's see what she did and i hope she finds found a solution i'm just skimming she said basically she said i decided it was time to tell my parents that's another thing too is when you're in a relationship with someone have at least one friend you can talk to about it um or at least talk to your therapist about it because 
someone has to know a relationship shouldn't be this like big fat secret like you know sometimes when we're in a relationship we don't know what's good or bad and sometimes you need a third party to tell you um that's not okay so you know what i mean so she finally told her parents which i'm glad i was shocked when my mom told me she knew something was going on my family was actually planning an intervention soon to see what was going on and to try to help me because they felt like i was long gone i was shocked to learn that i'm so full of shame and guilt which you should not ever feel that way i know i imposed i know i imposed a lot of worry on my loved ones and that's okay like if someone like you see how i reacted to somebody who i don't even know and then i thought about loved ones that have gone through this we're not upset or crying about the way that you're making us feel as an outsider what we're upset about is that you're such a great person you're such an innocent soul you are someone who is worthy of good things i'm gonna cry again we're crying because we love you and you did not deserve that you're a loved one for a reason whenever you're going through something it's not an inconvenience it's not it's not anything negative i for me for my loved one i love you and anything negative you go through it's not an inconvenience for me i'm not upset with you i'm not upset that you got yourself in the situation i'm not upset that you decided to date someone like this things fucking happen you date someone you think they're different and they're like what the fuck like who is this like you're weird you're crazy it's not don't ever feel bad like you went through a bad situation that's it all you need to do is learn to love yourself again that's all you have to do that's all what your homework is you're not supposed to be worried about what he's doing what he's gonna do with his life now whatever worry about you don't worry about if you hurt anyone in the process and you know if if there i know how there have been friend falling outs and things like that family falling out where people don't get help for the domestic abuse situation they continue to say um well the abuser is fine like he doesn't it doesn't hurt that bad anyway i know family members or loved ones are like well i'm just gonna cut you off because you're not gonna fucking like i get it if you have pushed people away because of a situation like this it's okay there's still time to come back that person that family that is trying to help you or a loved one that's trying to help you or a friend or whatever they love you and they just want you to realize what's really going on people get tired of trying to help people it's the truth but don't feel bad there's still time they still love you they're just waiting on you she said she basically felt comforted the next morning she slept over her parents house and that her parents are going to help her do an emergency protective order it's amazing and then people are in the comments asking you know how can i get my life back together what do i do now any help so for this right um so let me just read the comments but i can kind of get a gist of you know people are saying you know you're so strong and all that okay so here's my advice um as an outsider and whatever um number one work on dealing with your emotions what you're feeling number two never look back do not go back to this person do not think that the person is all you have you have options trust me this world is so big you don't need to just be with someone who treats you like this block them on everything there's no need to communicate about anything gather any evidence you have if you want to go the legal route i know i've never been in a legal issue so i don't know how expensive it can get but i can imagine so if you have the money or at least if you have no shame you know opening up a gofundme i know some people are kind of embarrassed about opening gofundmes you open up one up and and, you know talk to your friends again reach out to the loved ones you've pushed away the understanding ones will fall back on you they will come back and just tell everyone around you to have patience with you and you have patience with yourself i know that it, it's going to be a long process for you and don't expect it to just all be done and healed in like six months or whatever um, if you need time to fall in love again and date again that's perfectly fine and if you feel like casually dating casually hooking up with people that's fine just tell people straight ahead i'm not ready for anything serious i just left a very bad relationship please respect my boundaries be around people who respect your boundaries and you know love yourself if um you stop doing things you love do those things again and go out with friends and just have fun like have fun and find yourself again i like to tell people when things get like rock bottom look for your inner child and remember what that inner child would have done if they were really sad that day like you go back to the core of who you are your roots and that's my best advice you know obviously if there's financial connection he's, he has his name on your belongings or whatever like shared bank accounts like on your car insurance policy or whatever or like you know live together whatever you will find a way um, there's counselors there's advisors there's there's groups of other women who have been in situations like this and please know i understand that not only women go through this and 
roles can be reversed try to find a way around it and if you're a man going through this and the abuser was a woman don't feel any shame in talking to your homeboys about it and if your homeboys they don't understand at least still make them aware because it is a big thing and your homeboys that really love you will be there for you and not only that but seek i, would, I was gonna say seek women but that's probably triggering like i said i don't know any men who have been in a situation like this but if that's helpful for you or maybe motherly figure people who i don't know i don't, I don't really know how to word this one maybe people who who are comforting for you in general whether whatever gender it is whatever doesn't trigger you try to find people like that for yourself and join join the groups of people who have been hurt in general like this in situation like this and um just talk and just approach every day slowly and do everything step by step don't rush yourself don't get mad if you're not progressing quickly it's understandable and don't fall into bad habits don't say okay i'm gonna start drinking or i'm gonna start smoking mad weed because i can't get over this like you will find a way i have faith in you yeah that this is a very emotional one i didn't expect to cry on camera about that because i'm really a solutions kind of person so when loved ones go through things like this i'm just like bro like let's just let's find a solution like let's just move on let's find a solution like this is obviously not like let's just move on like you just got punched let's just move on no like let's better your life basically is what i'm trying to say i know it's such a hard thing but all in all guys wow um thank you for watching today's video um it's really hard for me to do like a funny cute little outro because that was a serious story and it just it is a reminder people are going through this every day check on your loved ones check on your friends check on those people around you that you care about if you're gonna want to throw a subliminal send this video to them and say hey you know i like this girl series you check it out and then maybe they might you know see that last segment and be like damn like that's kind of me you know but again um i do have to go to work back to reality my reality no more youtube stuff but yeah so i'm gonna put on the screen help for you if you're in that situation with the last story um again if you want to submit to my email anything okay we do have rules though there are rules so please look on i'll send the playlist um the rules on how to submit what to how to submit things thank you for watching if you watch all the way do you want to give me that subscription now? Did I earn it? Did I earn it? Yeah, if you want to subscribe, if you liked my advice, if you liked my vibe, please subscribe. I really appreciate it. Like I said, I'm going to try to post every Wednesday. And um, yeah, I really like this episode. Um, we got to get real and all that. So like I said, comment down below. Anything resonated with you, if anything helped you today. And you can follow me on my socials. I'll be here, girly. I'll be here. And yeah, just follow. I mean, um, follow stick around you know i have hair advice coming and hair stuff and let me turn my camera off because it's about to die thank you for watching today's episode i'll see you in the next one bye